In this video, we'll be talking about Amazon advertising, Amazon PPC. Our guest will be Chris Rawlings, and he will share some tactics which will help you to increase your advertising goals, uh, to fix your keyword ranking, and uh, it will maximize your profits. So my guest today is Chris Rawlings from Sophie Society. Hi, Chris. What's up, man? How's it going? All good. Thank you. And uh, we invited you here because in about two months, we are hosting, Orange Click is organizing European Seller Conference, an event in Prague in June 8, 9, and you will be speaking there. And we wanted to ask you to give a taste what you will be sharing, what knowledge and value bombs, how Americans say, you will be sharing in Czech Republic very, very sure. soon. So, yeah, before yeah. we move forward, uh, can you just tell us a little bit more what you do as for people who haven't seen you before? Yeah. Yeah. My name is Chris Rawlings. Um, I, uh, I run Amazon PPC campaigns for Amazon sellers through uh, my agency, Sophie Society. So we partner with sellers that have a great amount of potential on Amazon that are selling great products and provide a good experience and are ready to, to scale through Amazon PPC. Um, and we're at the cutting edge of, of Amazon PPC. We're constantly testing new different campaign strategies, um, as well as going with uh, the foundational stuff that, that our whole industry knows works um, to basically drive ranking, drive sales, uh, and drive profitability, depending on the product lifecycle stage. Of the products that we manage so uh yeah we'll be yeah. going through a, a really unique way to view ppc kind of from like viewing the whole picture which is uh pretty cool pretty exciting and uh yeah i'm really looking forward to it and uh, we will put some links relevant links in the description below of this video you will find the link to event in prague you will find the link to sophie society where chris can help you with your PPC campaigns and more. And also uh, you should find more links to e videos with Chris. He's one of the most um, frequent guests on our YouTube channel. And at the end, yeah, if you like his content, don't forget to hit like and subscribe so that uh, you get uh, more notifications about the videos we upload to our channel. So now I think we're ready to jump into the content. Uh, Chris, uh, you are welcome to share. So I'm gonna share my screen. I just wanna make sure that you guys can see it. Yeah, so... and uh, at any time, if uh, someone has any questions, don't forget to use the chat box on the site, or if you're watching a replay, ask your questions in the description below, or not in the description, in the comment section, and we will answer them later. So yeah, we see your screen. I, Great. Yes, everything is there. Cool. So yeah, so this is the the Amazon tree of potential, what you're looking at right now. So I'm about to zoom in. So if you're thinking, I don't really see anything but a bunch of lines, that's normal. Um, we created this to have one view where you could see every possible Amazon advertising campaign configuration in one single view. So what I'm going to do during this little session is uh, walk through some of these so that you can see what it's like to be able to see every possibility in one single view for each different type of Amazon advertising, sponsored products, sponsored brands, and sponsored display. We're not gonna go over DSP today. <coughs> so um, it's, it's both overwhelming, but also very freeing to be able to see everything in one view because you kind of realize Okay, there's a lot to it, but it's actually not that bad. Um, I could see every different possible campaign campaign configuration all at once. And then what we'll do is we'll go through a couple of what we call our favorite recipes, uh, where we route uh, in in um, the path of our favorite ways to set up campaigns to accomplish specific goals. And this is how we think of PPC professionally inside an organization who's wholly dedicated to being the best at PBC and, and being obsessed and managing PBC every day. So um, <clears throat> you guys get kind of a peek inside what it's like to, to really view PPC as, as a true professional. So I'll start by just doing a broad overview. Now, first, what I wanna do 
is, and I'm actually gonna, gonna split screen here. I'm gonna zoom in. So you see what we start here, is just Amazon advertising in general. What happens when you say create new campaign? Will you get to select between these three options, sponsored brands, uh, sponsored display, or sponsored products, which is over here. Um, and I'm gonna get into this legend later, but basically every shape means something in particular. Uh, it's either a type of placement, uh, where you land once the person clicks the ad, what type of bidding strategy there is, what type of creative you upload, if there's any creative to upload, the type of targeting and manual input. So this, this little legend allows you to see like at a glance, like what different types of inputs and outputs um, you'll see here. So starting with sponsored products, um, what I'm gonna do uh, before I even get into this, just to drive home like what this really is, is I'm going to open up Seller Central so you can see that this basically maps exactly the uh, campaign setup that you see inside Seller Central. So what do I first see? Ad group settings and then product targeting and then whether it's automatic targeting or manual targeting. And then if it's manual targeting, is it keyword targeting or product targeting? Now let's go back to the map and we see Manual inputs, is it manual targeting or is it automatic targeting? If it's manual targeting, are we doing keyword targeting or are we doing product targeting? Say we do product targeting, now are we doing category targeting or individual product targeting? So you see what this is, is basically just a visual map of the types of campaign configuration options that you have just inside your normal Seller Central account. So hopefully this is making sense to everybody. <clears throat> Once people get this, Normally there's like this big aha moment where they're like, whoa, this is amazing. Uh, and they realize, you know, how, how uh, beneficial this is and how cool this is to see it all in one place. So, so yeah, what I'm going to do is walk you through uh, an example with sponsored products. Then we're going to do a quick look at sponsored brands and sponsored display. We're not going to go through every possible campaign configuration. We're going to go much deeper in this in, in the event uh, in Prague coming up in June. Um, so this is kind of like a little teaser, uh, but then we're going to go through a few of the recipes that we think are, are most interesting and you'll see how valuable it is to have it all mapped out like this. And by the way, uh, we'll talk more about this at the end, but everyone that comes to Prague will have the option of, of getting their own version of this, their own digital copy of this. So that you can route your own recipes and, uh, and, you know, make your own favorite uh, configurations and keep them in, in your own little library if, you, if you'd like to do that. This is exactly what we do. So when I go into sponsor products, I can either do manual targeting or, or automatic targeting, meaning I either input my targets manually, be they keywords or products, or I allow Amazon to just determine the, the targeting for me. So we're going to continue down one of these paths. So I'm going to choose manual targeting. Inside manual targeting, you can either target keywords or you can target individual ASINs, right? Product targets. Um, let's say we're targeting products. Once we determine that we're targeting products, now we can either target whole categories or we can target individual products. Uh, let's say we're targeting individual products. Now I'm going to either manually enter the products, allow Amazon to suggest products, upload a file with pre-selected products, or I'm gonna use their little search engine inside the campaign configuration to search the products. Once I've determined which of those uh, product selection styles I'm going to use, I then determine what type of bidding I want to use with, with this particular campaign. So am I going to use Amazon's suggested bid, a custom bid, or whatever the default bid is? And what we do basically in the recipes we put together, we route the route, but then we also put guidance alongside so that you know uh, how to approach each of these different types of, of uh of configurations, super valuable. Next, since this is product targeting, inside product targeting on Amazon, you can either choose exact or expanded targeting. Exact means you're targeting a particular ASIN. Expanded targeting, which just came out in the middle of last year, is basically product targeting uh, for, it's, it's automatic campaigns for products. So this allows Amazon to determine other products that are like the products that you put in not necessarily the products that you put in to target. Hopefully this is making sense to people. If I lost anyone, don't worry, we're about to get into to 
specific recipes and um, we'll go, we'll go a little bit deeper there and I'll make sure everybody is, is on track here. Um, and also, by the way, if you are lost, it's okay. Because the whole point of this map is you can go back to this. And when you have recipes drawn out for you, you always know exactly what to input in your, your uh, Seller Central campaign configuration because you can always come back and reference the map. So if you're lost right now with me just determining this, just try to stay along uh, while we're walking through this and trust that uh, for those of you at least that come to the event, you'll be able to get these recipes yourself and you'll be able to implement them yourself um, with a map that gives you notes on how to do each step of the process. Okay, so this makes it super easy, easier than it ever has been before. So once you choose whether you're going to have exact product targets or use Amazon's own expanded product targeting uh, category, you can then manually input a bid per product rather than just per um, ad group. So that's something that you can do here. And then that brings us to negative product targeting. So those of you who are unfamiliar with this, uh, you may be familiar with negative keyword targeting. Uh, which is what we would have hit if we went down this route with keyword keyword targets, which means we tell Amazon not to target particular keywords. So we might have a group of keywords um, that we have, you know, broad match settings for, but we know that certain keywords never convert. So we have an ever expanding list of negative keywords. Well, it's the same with products. So you can negative product target. So you can tell Amazon never put my product on advert and never put my ad on these particular products or these particular ACs. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Um, so once you input your, your negative products, you can either exclude whole brands and all the products in the brand, or you can exclude individual products. And to find the individual products, you can either use Amazon's own little search bar. You can enter a list of ASINs yourself manually, or you can upload a file where you keep you know, your negative product targets uh, on your own. Once you do that, then you go into the bidding strategy for the whole ad group, whether it's down only, up and down, or fixed bids. Um, and then you determine whether you wanna off the bat choose a top of search bid adjuster. This is what determines how much Amazon will change your bid in order to hit top of search. Um, or your product placement bid adjuster. This is where Amazon determines how much it will up your bids to hit product placements. So um, determine, de depending on if you really want to land on product pages or you really want to land on, on search results, you can change these two uh, metrics here. And then you input the, the logistical stuff about the campaign, the campaign name, the portfolio it's going to be attached to, the start and end date if you have one, and the daily budget of the campaign. So just like that, we've basically walked through, now we haven't gone through every single branch of uh, sponsored products, but you can see how easy it is to go down a branch and see all possible campaign configurations and kind of like visually route which are best, which we've tried, which we haven't tried, which we read about, but we haven't implemented yet. And um, what a recipe looks like once you have this is what I'm about to show you here. So here we have a recipe. Now you can see one particular path is highlighted here. And this, this particular recipe happens to be for offensive product targeting campaigns. So offensive product targeting campaigns uh, basically just means product targeting campaigns that are not defensive. Okay, so offensive means we're putting our ad on other ASIN's products, on our competitor's products or other companies' products that are complementary to us. They might not be competitors, but they're other products. <clears throat> and defensive product targeting campaigns, which I think are right next to it, yeah. These are campaigns where we advertise our products on our other products' listings. So that's why it's called defensive, because we're keeping other companies from advertising their products on our listings, right? So defending our own real estate, our own advertising real estate, and offensively grabbing other ASINs advertising real estate. So those are the two types. So what you could see here is a simple map. Now, I, I, this is basically like a, a trail map. Now I could see the whole, uh, the whole park, so to speak, 
but then I see the trail that I'm trying to go down, right? And that's what makes it so valuable. We have dozens of these recipes that we use for particular scenarios when a product, say, wants to scale or a product, say, is losing market share from, from lower price competitors or a product is, say, doing really well and they want to pull some profits out. We, we take those scenarios and we thumb through our book of recipes and we pull out the recipes that make the most sense for us, right? So this is how to professionally run PPC, having protocols that are engaged and activated for particular scenarios. <clears throat> so let's just walk through this one as an example. Uh, you know what, let's use, let's use defensive as an example. Um, so what are we gonna do? We're gonna input the ad name, select the products. And then in terms of manual targeting or automatic targeting, we're gonna ignore automatic targeting, go straight to manual targeting. Then when it comes to product targeting or keyword targeting, we're gonna to go to product targeting. Then within product targeting, we can either target whole categories or individual products. We're going to target individual products. Now we're going to manually enter the products. And what we're gonna do here is enter the list of the other products in our own line. So all the other products in the same line of products, we're gonna enter here because we wanna advertise these products, this product on all of our other listings. So say I have like a skin exfoliator cream. Well, I'm also going to put that on my vitamin C serum listing. I'm also going to put that on my, my uh, sunscreen listing. I'm also going to put that on my moisturizer listing. So it doesn't necessarily have to always be in the same line. You can even, even if products are in different lines, you can cross sell as long as they're from the same brand pretty well. Um, one of the main things we're doing here is just simply taking up the space so that competitors can't. Um, you know, selling off of these is, is yet an added bonus onto that, but we're really just keeping other competitors from taking the, those spots, right? Uh, and this is just an example, guys. Like I said, we have dozens of, of these types of, uh, of re recipes, and we're going to be going over a lot of them with you in the event in Prague. So I really hope that all of you guys come to that. It's going to be an amazing event. Um, so then we're going to choose custom bid. Uh, we have the guidance here of starting above the, the suggested bid, just slightly above the suggested bid. And then over time, you're going to monitor and adjust that bid, make sure that you're getting placements. Um, you're going to choose exact targeting. And that is because we only want Amazon to put this ad on the products themselves, not other products it thinks are similar to it, which is what it would do if we did expand to targeting. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna skip the negative uh, product targeting. So you don't have to input anything there. And that's what this orange line is for. This is the map telling you to skip that. Go right to the bidding strategy and you're gonna use fixed bids. So you're gonna input the bid starting slightly above the Amazon suggested bid using fixed bids. And we're just gonna adjust that bid over time. Uh, we don't want to give Amazon the leeway right off the bat to move our bids all around because we don't have enough data yet. Uh, and then finally, you put in the campaign name, portfolio, start date, and end date. Daily budget, we will actually add guidance to this before giving these out to you guys at the event. <clears throat> but um, but this obviously depends on what kind of volume the product is doing, what kind of search volume there is on the product, how many sessions there are to the other ASINs, and what the competitive landscape looks like. Uh, you basically just want to make sure the budget lasts through the entire day. So there you go. There's uh, There's what a recipe looks like from the tree of potential. As you can see, we've got a bunch of these recipes and this is only for sponsored products. If I go back over to our, our whole tree of potential over here, you can see there's whole other realms of this map. You know, sponsored, sponsored brands is a, a, a big realm. There's a lot of different possibilities, mostly because you have the ability to input custom creatives in here, which you don't have the ability to do inside sponsored products. You'll see, if we go back to our legend, this red uh, oval means there's custom creative. There's no red ovals in the sponsor product section. The sponsor brand section, you see a lot of red ovals here because those are areas where you can upload custom creative. So sponsor brand has its own whole set of different recipes that are used in different scenarios. And uh, sponsor display, yet again, a whole other world. In here, you have whole different types of advertising spend in general, like for instance, VCPM, which means view per million, the uh, uh, view cost per viewable million. Uh, sorry, viewable cost per million. So, um, 
per thousand. Sorry, I'm just messing that up. It's uh, I'm still jet lagged uh, from these trips I've been on. Yeah. So cost per thousand views. This is a whole different way of advertising on Amazon. Um, so this is this is an entirely different world. And also in sponsored display, you have the uh, potential to target audiences, which in the other types of advertising, you don't even have that option. So this is a whole different section. Um, it also allows you to do look back periods for remarketing that you don't see any of that in the other two types of advertising. So as you can see, having a map like this allows you to easily see the big major differences between the types of advertising, see what types of advertising you've tried and what types you haven't, explore what, uh, what features are part of which branches of the advertising. You can see here, you're only going to be able to do this views remarketing and these look back periods if you select the, the audience targeting versus the contextual targeting, which is more classical where you have the category and the product targeting over here. So um, yeah, so this, this allows you to see what possibilities exist in one single view with Amazon advertising. There's no possible campaign configuration setup that's not represented here in some path on this map from start to end. And uh, yeah, with that, uh, basically, I'll, I'll, we'll open it up for, for questions and discussion here. Uh, this usually opens up a whole can of worms with people. It's, it's usually like a whole different frame of mind of thinking. We're not going to go so deep into all of the uh, recipes here. I'm just opening the book for you guys. This is like literally our internal Miro. Um, once we get to Prague, I'm going to be showing you just like a cookbook, like page by page recipes. Um, using this tree of potential after after I describe it for people there. Um, but yeah, uh, we're not going to get too deep into that now because uh, we'd give away the whole the whole event uh, content. So what I'll do now is open it up for uh, for questions. If we do have some extra time, Augustus, I can go through one more recipe, one more exciting recipe really deep. Uh, if people really want it, I'm happy to do that. But uh, yes, yeah. sure. So everyone who is listening, if you enjoyed what Chris shared, don't forget to hit like uh, button below. We still have too few likes. And uh, also, yeah, you can get the whole recipe if you come to Prague's event. I wanted to, uh, and by the way, um, very soon Chris can answer your questions. So type them in. And I wanted to share the screen where we can shortly talk about the event which is happening in Prague. It's happening for the third time. Uh, it's organized by Orange Click, by us. And uh, we are running this event on June 8 and 9. It's a two days event. There will be a VIP experience for people who decided to invest into a VIP ticket. We will also have a free meetup with uh, people from Prague. Um, we hope to attract some local Czech sellers to come to this meetup and uh, during the main event what's uh, maybe unique about this event is that um, you get uh, we we get like about 95 percent of uh, people coming flying or driving or coming by train they are not local czech people so it's like totally international event and uh, uh, we brought quite uh, nice lineup of speakers uh, chris will be coming bradley sutton from helium 10 tommy robinovich from top dog stephen pope my amazon guy so a few guys from north america there will be one uh, experienced amazon seller michael he uh, had eight figure business and he actually exited we will have uh yeah julia talking about sourcing we will have actually two sellers here there will be more sellers in the lineup but michael and thomas they are uh, sellers who will share their strategies how they run their business we have few panelists and uh, yeah if you i think it's a nice location to uh, to join you know everyone in prague usually we did this event already two times in uh, march but this time we're doing in june and of it's course one of my I, favorite events <clears throat> yeah. one of my favorite events uh 
yeah. in the Amazon space. It's a great event and it's super like intimate. You really get close with uh, the other sellers at the event. Um, you really get close with the speakers. It's not like one of those where, you know, you don't talk to the speakers. They're like on a distant stage somewhere and then they, they run off into their back room and you never talk to them. Like everyone's mingling. Some of the greatest insights, um, even for our own brands have come from me seeing some of the other uh, speakers that everyone basically dishes out their best stuff. Nobody's holding back. <clears throat> um, it really is. It's one, it's one of my favorite events in this, yeah, in this cool. entire space. Yeah, thank you. And indeed, the venue is very tight. So uh, we will have, a, we expect about 200, hopefully a bit more attendees. Uh, nothing is spread. Everybody is one in one space. It's like really wherever you go you have like-minded people and uh, i also wanted to talk about uh, vip experience so if you decide to upgrade to vip ticket uh, on june 7th on wednesday in the afternoon we'll have uh, steven tomer and chris hosting uh, round tables and uh, they will be answering your questions these three guys they have like a lot of knowledge behind the scenes because they talk with a lot of other influencers and a lot of sellers. So they sometimes can share with you information if you write, ask the right questions, which they will never say on the stage publicly. So it's really a good opportunity for you to get some really good tips where you can like really multiply your business revenue. And um, yeah, so that's uh, about the event. Let's see if we have uh, questions. Okay, we have a few questions. So, um, yeah, by the way, if you want to come to Prague's event, you will find the link below in the description. And also, um, Chris, uh, if you want to contact Chris and that his team helps you with the PPC and Amazon advertising, also, you will find the link below. And uh, now let's take a few questions. So, let's take Bendy's question Which number of default bit you for launching one SQ, SQ. Uh, you choose uh, Amazon suggest default bit or your own. Yeah, so when you're launching one SKU, you're really gonna wanna spend a majority of your ad spend on single keyword exact match campaigns to drive ranking for your best keywords. So uh, you, you could have anywhere between 10 and 40 of these campaigns that are just focused on ranking specific keywords. That's in the launch phase with the single SKU, that's where you want most of your ad spend to go. So you don't really have to mess around with so many different types of, of ad types. Once you're a couple of weeks in, you could turn on some remarketing, which really helps as well. Um, some other types of low hanging fruit ad spend. If you have good video, you could put in a sponsored video ad. But uh, but yeah, you're mostly going to want to focus on the, the single keyword exact match campaign type. So when it comes to the bidding, um, you're going to want to start with uh, just it, so the bidding matters less than people think because most of it comes into the the starting bid. I sorry matters less than people think because most of the the bid adjustments comes into the monitoring afterwards when you see the search term reports. <clears throat> but you can start with slightly above Amazon suggested bid, a couple cents over Amazon suggested bid, and then you're going to monitor and and adjust the bid as time goes on based on how that keyword is performing and if you're getting placements. The main thing you want to do is continually adjust the top of search bid adjuster. And you're going to want to continue to up that so that you get on uh, top of search placement for this product, for this ad type, um, right off the bat. That's the most important thing. That's what you want to do uh, before anything else. So uh, yeah. So. Start with the bid, slightly higher than Amazon's bid, fixed bid, monitor it over time. If you're not getting placements, you're not getting impressions, then you up the bid um, until you are, and then use the top search bid adjuster to increase the, the percentage of your total placements in your placement report that are getting top of search. So you wanna aim for at least 30% plus of your placements coming from top of search because that's what really drives ranking really hard. Rest of search is good too. Um, but you really want to focus on, on getting mostly top of search placements if you can. All right. And I see we have a historical moment in uh, Orange Clicks YouTube channel. It has never, ever happened in our history. 
Mohit, uh, he's the first one who used the super comment where he invested 110 rupees, Indian rupees, to post a comment and support our work. Uh, nice. So, Thanks, Mohit. That's uh, awesome. Thank you, Mohit. We will soon answer your question. And by the way, I want to give you additional gift. I see you asking about um, US Marketplace. Write to team at uh, orangeclick.com and we will give you some additional access to some recordings of our previous events which will help you to get more uh, VP knowledge from our library. So make sure you write and send a screenshot of your YouTube channel so that we know it's you. So really appreciate your super comment and everybody else uh, support us with super comments, which you just need to invest a little bit and maybe we can do sometimes a, a drawing out of these people and giving um, some kind of gifts. So Mohit, let's answer your question. Uh, yeah. He is asking, hey, Chris, I'm from India. I sell on Indian marketplace. And in the future, I want to start in US nice. market. Any suggestions? Yeah. So the main thing is um, the so the Indian market is is also really hyper competitive. So it's actually a good like uh, training ground for the US, which is also hyper competitive. So, um, yeah, you're you're it's a good place to start rather than, you know, sometimes people go from selling on their local place, local marketplace in India or Germany or something like that. And they go to the U S and they're like, Whoa, the competition is like 10 times stronger here. Um, you're, you're already going to be used to that. So that that's good. You have that leg up. So good on you. You started in a tough place. Um, the main thing that I, I would take into consideration when moving over to the U S marketplace from India or another marketplace is do deep, competitive research and keyword research ahead of time and make sure that the search volume of the keyword, the primary keyword that you're targeting with the product is not outside the budget range that it requires to launch a product there. So what I mean by that is say I'm going after a product that's fairly niche. The search volume for the primary keyword is 4,000 searches a month. That's something that I could feasibly launch um, and get ranking with my first shipment of, say, a thousand, a thousand units ish. Um, I could probably like not lose too much money, or maybe even break even on those thousand units. You're not really going to make money on those first thousand units. That's that's not super common. Um, and you can get rolling and get some ranking with that by, you know, having a clickable coupon, doing aggressive. Uh, single keyword exact match ranking PPC. Um, and so it's not going to cost you like an arm and a leg to get ranking for that volume of a keyword. But if you're launching Omega-3 supplements and you're going for a keyword that has 250,000 searches a month, uh, e even if it's lower than that, even if it's say 50,000 searches a month, 40,000 searches a month, you're going to have to budget a lot more for that launch. So this is the main thing people don't get when they, they launch in the U.S. market for the first time. They don't realize what budget they need based on the search volume. The, the main thing you need to determine how much it's going to take you to rank and stick the, land, stick the landing for a new product in the U.S. marketplace is the search volume for the primary keyword for that product. So it's going to cost you like 10 times more to launch a product that has 300,000 searches a month. Than it is for you to do uh, launch a product that has um, one tenth of that that search volume or even one tenth of that. So that's the main thing I would take into consideration. Also, take it the take a look at the page one ranking competitors. If most of them have like eight, nine, ten thousand, even you know on Amazon today their listings with twenty thousand reviews, fifteen thousand reviews. So if most of the competitors have gigantic review rates. Um, and your product is not crazy differentiated, it's going to be difficult for you to launch in that space. And I would try to niche down, go more specific. That's, uh, yeah, that, that'd be the highest level uh, uh, guidance that I can give you know, in, this, in this short time. But, but congrats, Mohit. That sounds pretty exciting that you're moving over to the U.S. marketplace. It's a, it's a good move. Cool, Mohit. Good luck and uh, uh, contact us for additional bonuses, being the first to support our channel through YouTube's super comments. So now we have a question from Jose Hernandez. 
In one of uh, your videos, you mentioned the goals that PPC campaigns should have. One of them is research. You mentioned having campaign for each of your top keywords and another for each five of your top five keywords. We could see those recipes. So basically they want to see these recipes you mentioned. Yes. So uh, there are no. So you remember that we usually arrange campaigns, assign campaigns to a goal. So, and like the ones that you mentioned, there are uh, ranking for a particular keyword could be a goal. Research, meaning you're determining what particular search terms from a bigger basket of keywords are converting best. Uh, performance, where you have like a profitable or very lean, at least near profitable keyword that performs really well. Um, discovery, where you're trying to discover brand new keywords that aren't even on your list yet to put into your research and performance campaigns. Uh, these are all different goals. Uh, defensive uh, product targeting, that's a goal. You're, you're trying to use up the placements on your own listings. That's a goal. You're defending your own listings. So throughout the, the event in Prague, I'm going to go through all of the ones that I mentioned, plus, plus a few more. Um, I'm basically going to open up our recipe book to you guys. Each one takes such a long time to walk through that it's just, it's not possible for us to walk through them on this uh, session. I, like I said before, I might be able to walk through one more, uh, one more recipe for you guys on this session. But if you want like the whole book of recipes that, that you're just gonna have to, to come to the event. And uh, yeah, sorry, we're putting so many teasers, but I wanted to say a good news for those which maybe cannot come uh, physically for different reasons. Uh, maybe it's too far or um, we we haven't announced this, but we might consider to uh, giving a possibility to upgrade or to access to purchase the recordings of the event. So we are still thinking about of this but uh, my there might be a possibility to purchase the recordings as well and yeah correct then, me if i'm wrong yeah. augustus but that would come with the accompanying materials right yeah yeah so, yeah sure. so yeah. in that case you would actually get the the recipes yeah. themselves all right mohit is so excited about uh, what he's hearing but he wants to know if there will be event in india well we are not planning uh, we know there is an indian sourcing network uh ladies. megla yeah megla and uh, i forgot the other lady um so yeah they do kind of events maybe more different format but uh, talk to them maybe they can organize something a more regular conference and uh, mohit is happy about your advice before Let's thank you see. brother thank you for engaging mm -hmm. yeah. Shutong Wang. Uh, hi, Chris. My company recently launched a new product which is based on a well selling product but adds a unique new feature. Do you have any okay. suggestions to let more people know about the product? Yeah. So, this type of product launch where there's like a really unique feature on an already great selling product is awesome for product placement ads. You want to do like a deep audit of the marketplace um, and determine a whole list of different products that don't have the feature, try to get your main image to somehow highlight the feature or prove that the feature is with just by looking at it, just by looking at the main image without even clicking it in, if it's possible. A lot of times it's done with a zoom window where they say, this is the image. And there's a little circle on the image that like expands out into a bigger circle that shows what the feature is. It like zooms in on one little part of it. You could try something like that. Um, you want to have some way where it you could tell just from the thumbnail that yours is better. And then once you've nailed that, you just get on as many product placements as possible because people will click and then they'll stay because they're already on another listing that they viewed that doesn't have the feature, doesn't have this capability. Um, and then they see your ad and they either see the, the primary image, which looks good, or they see a better price or they see that there's a coupon involved and they click it. And then they're not going to leave your listing. They're going to purchase because they just came from a worse listing that doesn't have the feature. So it can be really powerful with this type of innovative product to do, you know, one way to, to split up the types of advertising on Amazon is search-based. 
and browse based. Search based shows up in search results when somebody types a keyword. Browse based uh, shows up when they're just browsing around. They're on a listing, they've already maybe clicked on five other listings. Um, so this is really good for browse-based advertising. New features is good for browse-based advertising on Amazon. So another thing you'll definitely wanna try is expanded product targeting. So this is a type of, of advertising inside sponsored products. So when you go to click a new campaign, you click sponsor products, then you're gonna to go to product targeting. So you're gonna target a specific product and then you're gonna to go to expanded. There's a little box that you click that says expanded. So you're gonna click that. And so you're not gonna click exact targeting, you're gonna click expanded targeting. And then you're gonna put in your own ASIN and you could also put in the ASINs of the top selling competitors, especially the ones that um, are not, uh, don't have the this feature that you have. And then you're gonna, uh, this allows Amazon to just find other listings that are similar um, and advertise on those. And it's actually really good. Expanded product targeting campaigns are doing really well right now. They're performing great. So we usually recommend you do one expanded product targeting campaign with just your ASIN as the seed. So inside the ASIN targets, you only have one and it's just the very same one that you're, you're advertising. So if I'm advertising my garlic press and it has like a really cool new stomp feature, I'm just gonna start an expanded product targeting campaign in sponsored products. And I'm gonna put my own ASIN, that very same garlic press inside the targets and click expanded. And then Amazon is, we're gonna let Amazon find other, uh, other targets that are similar to that. And then you do another campaign where you're gonna put your top competitor or a list of your top five or top 10 competitors. And um, you see how those, those uh, convert differently. So start with that. Perfect. And uh, actually we had a question from Usman. He's asking, uh, how can we contact you? Yeah, I you I'll, I'll I could put it in the chat. I think here, but it's just Is hello it at sophiesociety.com. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. that's it right there. Yeah, so that that gets to me and, and my team. So both me and, and my team see, the, see emails that come into that inbox. So yeah, hit me up there. Perfect. So next one, uh, we have a question from the same Usman. Usman. Uh, hi, Chris. What roadmap would you give to someone who is starting out his journey of learning and mastering PPC? I, I optimize listings at Unibrands and I want to upskill my, myself towards PPC. Yeah. So I'd say, um, first of all, learning in the field is the best by like actually managing campaigns and testing different things out. But um, the the best sources of knowledge that i know of uh you know first of all augustus's event you know you you'll actually hear from some of the top ppc experts in the space so that's a really great place to go and then augustus also has a lot of youtube videos including some that feature me that explain different aspects of ppc it, youtube is an excellent resource there are a lot of great amazon experts and sellers that share what's working with them from a ppc perspective um also if you're looking to go really deep we run a ppc challenge two to two or three times a year we're going to do the next one later this summer that's something where like you're completely immersed in it you have homework to do you have assignments you learn new things each day for five days a new domain of ppc and by the time you come out of that you're you're equipped to be effective at ppc so that's something you might might consider as well. But Absolutely. the main thing is being in the field, just running campaigns. If you get a hold of a, an account and you just run those campaigns, like you're going to learn in the field. I wanted to ask if your PPC set challenge is suitable for service providers who are running PPC campaigns for others. Well, right now it's only available to sellers. Uh, and the reason for that is because we need them to have an account that they have skin in the game of in order for them to be like engaged in the content and be able to apply it live. Um, because if you're, you know, if you're a service provider, you're serving another account, you don't have the authority to like, you know, test new stuff out and put stuff in live. So as of now, the, the challenge is for brand owners. All right, amazing. And let's see if we have more questions. So I see Eva really, she says she cannot make the event 
in Prague. And then uh, she says that she's originally from Prague. So Eva, yes, follow our website, orangeclick.com slash events. You will uh, get updates on our upcoming projects. Ushman, whose question you just answered, he says, thank you. Shutangs, Shutong, uh, Shutong says also thank you. And okay, AXA wants to know, when we decrease the bits, we lost the impression. Mm, yeah, you need to bump them back up. So that's the game. You know, when you start decreasing bids, um, you have to see what the level, the, the limit is. And you guys just found it. So in a sense, that's good because now you know where the bottom is and you need to stay above that to keep getting impressions. Now, if that campaign stops being profitable to you or it stops driving ranking or doing whatever the goal of that campaign was, if it's not accomplishing that goal at that bid level and you're paying too much, then it might be a campaign or a keyword to shut down or a target to, to shut down and just not focus on it. Drive more of your ad spend towards the things that are working well. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I think uh, we don't have uh, many uh, questions in the chat. Do you, guys, uh, Chris was talking that maybe he can share another another kind of formula, another recipe. Let us know in the comments if you want to see it. We still have a little bit of time. Meanwhile, let's see what uh, we have another question. Shutong says, I have another question. I wish to get Amazon's choice for each child ASIN for a listing. How should I decide on keywords for each child? Yeah, so, <clears throat> so when it comes to getting Amazon's choice, it's per keyword, right? So you getting Amazon's choice for a keyword that has 500 searches per month is nowhere near as valuable than getting Amazon's choice for a keyword that has 50,000 searches per month because way less people are seeing it, right? In the thumbnail. The whole point of the Amazon's Choice badge that benefits sellers is that it increases the click-through rate. Um, it's not so much about the conversion rate, although it can affect that. The main thing is it gets more clicks from search results to the listing. So uh, the way to determine which keyword to, to gun for the Amazon's Choice badge for, and, you know, it's so... Amazon's choice has been established is related to Alexa ordering. We've never tried to game that by like gaming more orders from Alexa, more voice orders. We've gotten Amazon's choice badges many times just by driving sales through that keyword through PPC, simply single keyword exact match campaigns. So if you're selecting which keywords that you want to go after, especially if you're going after for these different, different variations of the product, you want to select ones that you know you can own. If you can really be like the guy for that keyword, if, you, if you're being realistic with yourself and you're like, there's no way I'm going to own this keyword that has 50,000 searches a month, then see if there's one that's really specific for your product's application or your niche or your sub niche. You know, maybe yours is, maybe all of the products are for dogs, but yours is for extra small dogs or teacup dogs, you might own that keyword for teacup dog omega-3 supplement or small dog omega-3 supplement or small dog leash or tiny dog leash um, and go after that, something that you know you can actually dominate. And that's when you, you end up getting the Amazon's Choice badge, when you're the one that's converting more than anybody else for that particular search term. And you can have lots of Amazon. You can have Amazon's choice badges for all different types of keywords. But um, yeah, target the one that you know you can you can dominate. Uh, guys are saying, yes, please. We want another recipe, another insights, another tips. So Chris, people want more. Okay, cool. I'll share with you guys another one. So this is actually, a, a, you guys are lucky because I'm, I'm going to do like a whole segment on this type. Um, but just for you guys, I'm going to share this as a secret little tip. I think most people aren't going to see this anyway, so I'm not, not super, uh, super worried about this getting out. Um, I think we might've shared a little teaser with this, with, uh, with you guys, uh, through Augustus before, but you're in for a treat. So almost all of you guys can apply this type of campaign that I'm about to walk through. 
So let me and do full screen. While, uh, yeah, while Chris is preparing, I wanted to mention that if you enjoy the content so far, if you enjoy the answers you get from Chris, don't forget to like and subscribe the video. And if you want to meet uh, Chris very soon in Prague, um, check the link below for European Seller Conference, which Orange Leak is organizing. It's happening in June 8 and 9. So we welcome you. If you want to meet Orange Clicks team, come there. And now let's see. Uh, okay. This is already sharing the screen. Yep. Let's rock and roll. Okay. So um, check this out. This is called a self targeted product placement campaigns. We like to call them STEP campaigns, SDPP campaigns. This is something that we discovered in house. One of our senior account managers discovered this. His name's Dave. Um, inside our internal mastermind, we tested this out and we now apply it to a lot of our brands, a lot of our campaigns. So this seems simple when you go through it, but I'm actually going to show you on amazon.com what it really means. Uh, so first, let me just go through the recipe itself. Okay. So we're going to start with sponsored products. Uh, input the ad name, select the product, and you're going to select one single product to target. We're going to select manual targeting. So not audience, uh, not automatic targeting, but manual targeting. We're going to go to product targeting. Then we're going to manually enter the product and here's where the magic comes in. You're going to hit the custom bid, bid just above Amazon suggested bid. And then you're going to select exact product targeting but you're gonna input this very same product that you're advertising as your target. So this is kind of like inception. You're, you're hypothetically advertising your product on your own products listing. So the product's ad would show up on its own listing, which it sort of doesn't make any sense, right? They're already on the listing. Why would they need an ad for, for that very same listing, right? And in fact, actually, it's impossible to do this functionally. But what this does, it's kind of short circuits Amazon because they won't put your ad on the very same ASIN that you're advertising because you're already there. And Amazon views it as a waste. But it does something else that's kind of magical. And I'm going to show you guys exactly what it is. Uh, but bear with me here while I go through the rest of the setup. So I'm going to do exact targeting, input the exact same product as the target and only that product. So you have one single target and it's the very same product that you're advertising. Then you're gonna forego negative product targeting and you're gonna go straight into the bidding strategy, select fixed bids, cause we're gonna be adjusting that over time. And then just input that you're not gonna input a top of search bid adjuster yet or a product page bid adjuster yet. You're gonna just input the campaign name, portfolio, start date and daily budget. And here's what that does. So let me exit full screen mode here for a second. So say I am a, a uh, customer and I'm searching for a hand blender. Now I'm a shopper. I'm looking through these hand blenders and I scroll past the sponsored results and I'm looking at the organic results here, right? Now say my brand is this, Ovente. So I'm the Ovente brand. And I just set up one of these step campaigns. So my ad's not showing up here when somebody searches hand blender. I did an exact product targeting campaign on my own listing. And this is the listing. Okay. So my ad's not showing up, but I am showing up organically. So that's good. So say the shopper checks out this other competitor's listing. Okay. They think it's interesting, but they want to see more options. They hit the back button on their browser. This is very common. You know, sellers do this all the time. They, they check a couple different listings. Then they check my listing and they like it. They think it looks sleek. It looks nice. It's got a lot of reviews, four and a half star rating. The branding looks good. The images look good. It looks good. So I'm pretty sold, but I'm still shopping around. So I hit the back button on my browser again. Now, this is where the ad will show up when you set up a step campaign. Now that somebody's been on the listing, they hit the back button on their browser and go back to search results. Now the ad for that very same listing starts showing up in their top of search and rest of search. 
So it's, it's effectively like retargeting. So it's basically like a hack to get retargeting. I mean, this is completely TOS compliant. You're not violating any rules by doing this, but I think Amazon just didn't intend for it. It's kind of like a, an unintended side effect of the way they set up their, their ad campaigns that you can essentially effectively retarget with the sponsored product ad, which you're not supposed to be able to do. You're only supposed to be able to retarget with this type of advertising, sponsored display, where they have their own whole retargeting, remarketing setup. It's called views remarketing, purchase remarketing. Uh, and you can set a look back period and all that stuff. You're, you're intentionally setting up uh, retargeting. This step campaigns, this is really intended to be retargeting, but if you set it up exactly like this, it's effective retargeting. So we get campaigns that do really low ACoS with this type of campaign. We'll get like 6% ACoS sales, 10% ACoS sales, 4% ACoS sales, because somebody's already been on the listing. They're already pre-sold. So now that they're seeing the ad again, when they're shopping around, they're way more likely to click it. Now, the caveat here is you're not going to get many sales from this type of advertising. So it's only going to be shown to people who click your listing and then go back to search results. So it's, it's not that many. Um, but the ones that you do get are going to be very lean. You're going to be getting profitable sales from this. So it's just a way to set up a campaign that gets you a, a small trickle of profitable low A-cost sales. And it's a, useful, it's a useful trick. It's not going to scale you to 100 million, but it'll be part of the, uh, part of the overall strategy that gets you there in a lean way. So that's that's a little nugget that I'll share with you guys today. And I'll, I'll stop sharing my screen. Cool. Thank you very Hope much, you like Chris. That. Yeah, guys, uh, let us know in the comments if you liked. And if you really like this tip, uh, also don't forget to hit the like button below the video. And uh, one more time, I wanted to mention that if you want to meet Chris, come to Prague to European Seller Conference, which we are organizing in... Uh, june 8 and 9 and uh, you can find the link below in the description as well and what else i see we have very uh two more questions by the way shutong says he loves this trick uh, gonna try it today Ella nice. says thank you so yeah it was really good stuff uh, let's see we have two more questions from Turkey, can you recommend Google Ads for our PPC ads? Will it work? So you can drive Google traffic to your Amazon listings and yeah, that can work great. There's an awesome company that both Augustus and I are familiar with called Amped that does this. Um, and um, it helps you set up and drive Google traffic directly to your, your Amazon listing in a way that allows you to track and measure its effectiveness. You also get a bonus from Amazon referral bonus for sending traffic sending external traffic to your listings um which helps pay for that traffic itself it's it's really significant so amazon will pay you to drive external traffic to your listings pretty exciting pretty cool stuff so yeah it, it can work great lots of sellers have great success with driving google traffic perfect and actually Sibeni says he liked or she liked the trick and he says hopefully your team will do that for us so of course step campaigns Sophie society can implement easily right it is the your team who discovered those and to contact uh, chris about that the best is to write to hello at Sophie society right yep that's right okay perfect Oh, a few more questions of coming in. Uh, let's see, Ritu. In one of your videos, you explained bid strategy and guide to make three different campaigns for all three bid strategies. Can you explain again? Yeah. So what that probably was that was actually the is creating different campaigns for the different types of automatic targeting. I believe is what you're referring to because this is a recent presentation that I did. In terms of bidding strategy, most of the work comes in the adjusting of the bids over time from getting your search term reports. Um, I believe what, what you're referencing is it, when you set up an automatic campaign, there are actually four different types of automatic campaigns that you can set up. And I'll actually show you what they are right now. I'll just screen share real quick and show you what I mean by this. 
And um, I, I, if I'm if I'm remembering the the presentation that you're talking about, we talked about setting up automatic targeting campaigns, and you have the ability to set up close match, loose match, substitutes, or complements campaigns, and you can set your bid based on the targeting group. Um, this is what I was talking about. You do a different campaign per type of automatic targeting because then you know how well Amazon is doing uh, at its different types of quote unquote automatic uh, algorithms that it uses to, to target other products. You know, close match is going to be the ones that are most similar to your products. Loose match, it gets, you know, a little bit broad, a lot broader, actually, like the circle widens a lot. Substitutes means a different type of product that somebody would swap to solve the same problem. And a complement is, is a product that is uh, typically bought with your product that would be bought in the same cart as your product that, that are typically bought together. So these are different types of automatic targeting and you wanna see how they perform differently so that you can adjust the bid differently. So you wanna do one campaign per type of automatic targeting when you're setting up those campaigns. I think that's, that's uh, what we're referring to there. Yes, so thank you Rito for the question. By the way, Red uh, says, thank you. You answered his question about, I already forgot, but there was a question before. Um, Mao wants to know, can you give us an idea of the Sophie Society costs? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. So um, to manage your PPC, you basically get a team at Sophie Society uh, to manage it. We have economics of scale, so we're going to cost nowhere near what like a, a, a freelancer would cost um, or, or somebody full time inside the company. We're more along the lines of a cost of a, a skilled VA. So um, we charge a tiered structure that scales with your company. So it's more of a partnership than anything. We really don't make much on, on the beginning stages. We, we, we succeed together as you succeed. So we're incentivized to help you grow. So it starts at 5% of PPC ad spend, and then it goes down to 4%, like a tax bracket, then 3%, then 2%, then 1%, then half a percent as you get bigger and bigger. So the minimum for a small brand that's just starting out is $997 per month. Um, and uh, yeah, we're, we've committed to keeping that pricing um, for this quarter, but that the pricing is going to go up because uh, the amount of resources that we're putting into to these accounts, like we treat each and every business as, as if it's our own business. So, um, so yeah, so that's how we do the pricing structure where it's basically a partnership where we grow with you, uh, you grow with us as, as you grow. So we're all aligned in the, the same incentive. And yeah, if you email uh, hello at sophiesociety.com, don't forget to mention this video, I'll put a link so that Chris knows that you are watching this and uh, you know, they, they can refer to the content you listen so that they can uh, adjust or kind of get back to you in a more custom way or more personalized way. So let's see, you, Chris, do you have a few more minutes? I see there is another question. Sure, yeah, okay. yeah, let's go. Perfect, so. Yeah, yeah, Mof we're in Max this together, let's go. Question, if I create two separate keyword targeting campaigns on one keyword for two different variations of same product, will both of the variations be shown on the first page a sponsored product. So what Amazon does for this, when you put both variations on one, oh, you put two separate campaigns? Okay, yeah, so if you're doing two separate campaigns and each one just has one single child ASIN in it, um, you're gonna see how they perform differently. It will show them. Um, wh what a lot of times, will do is put the variations together in a campaign to see which one is performing best. And then we try to really drive as much of the ad spend and traffic as we possibly can to the best performing variation. And then the other variations just get free traffic from people clicking that top performing variation. So the main, the main reason that you wanna do separate campaigns for different variations if, is if they actually solve different problems. Like if one is for tall people and one is for short people, then you definitely want to have different campaigns for the tall version of your stand-up desk and the short version of your stand-up desk, even if they're the same parent ASIN because they're different keywords. Somebody might be doing, somebody who wants a tall one is going to be searching extra tall stand-up desk, uh, wooden stand-up desk. But the, the shorter person is going to say, you know, short or mini or small uh, stand-up desk. 
So those will have separate campaigns. But um, if you have just different colors or different designs, but it's the same product um, that solves the same problem, then most of the time you just want to start a campaign that has all of them. You see which one is performing best, and then you drive all the traffic to just that one that you find just typically performs the best. And then you allow that one to be the foot in the door and people cross sell to the other variations once they get in. Great. Thank you. And um, well, let's take it as a last. It's a question about Sophie Society. So you mentioned the price of your service. Do you run the whole PPC campaign types? Yep. Yeah, we take over your PPC. So we take over the whole PPC. We, we sync with you to make sure that we're uh, aligned on the actual strategy of the brand and the goals of the brand whether you're lean, what your budget is, if you're trying to scale aggressively, or if you're really trying to scale more profitably uh, in a slower fashion, then we set up the campaigns based on your goals, based on the, the status and the life cycle of each of the products. Um, we have regular calls with you to stay in touch. You get a report every week and, a, and an email summary of how things went over the past week, each week. Um, and you have you know, any time messaging email access to your senior campaign manager. And they also have a whole team underneath them. So we have the economics of scale with us because we we do this for a lot of brands. We and we don't you know we don't oversubscribe. We only take a few more brands each month um, that we know have have potential to actually succeed. And uh, uh, yeah, so yeah, it, it it encompasses everything. So we even advise you on the things outside PBC that you need to do to make your PBC work better. So we'll let you know. Hey, look, you have a click through rate problem. You have to solve this. Um, if you want, you can work with our conversion team, which is a different part of the company to help you solve that. Um, or you can do it on your own. It's completely up to you, but we can tell based on the numbers that your click-through rate is below average for the industry and you need to solve this. So they're going to be even telling you things that you have to do outside PPC in order for your PPC to work better. Perfect. Amazing, Chris. So, uh, all the links, relevant links, you, everyone will find below in the description, the event in Prague. Sophie Society's link if you want help with uh, PPC and any ad, and other related videos with Chris. We have really a lot of videos on our YouTube channel. Most of them have thousands of views. So check this out and uh, like this video. And thank you, Chris. Bye. -bye. Thank you, guys. <laughs> thank you, guys. It was Bye. it was great doing this with you guys. Cool. And thanks, thanks, Augustus. See you in Prague. Bye bye. And now I would like to invite you to watch other video where Chris explains you how you can uh, optimize your advertising campaigns by focusing on click through rate instead of uh, cost per click. So check this video on our channel.